Oh look, it's another laser. This is the Otour Laser Master Engraver 3. In this video, we're gonna walk through all the features, give you guys some demo projects, and then compare it to the competition. Let's jump into it. All right, welcome back to the shop. My name is Brandon, and I'm excited to talk about the Otour Laser Master 3 with you guys. And there have just been a ton of laser companies that are out there, and it seems like they were all pretty much copying one design, and then they were selling it, and there was like a gold rush because people were buying it. And the best that I could tell, they were copying the original Otour Laser Master design. And since that, Otour has improved their design after iteration and iteration. They had the Otour Laser Master engraver two pro which I've also done a review of they have their Alfaro line which is like the cheaper version of these units both the one and the two which I've also done a review on and now we are at number three and I can definitely say number three is the nicest of the machines from Otour that I have reviewed and just from the initial looks of it you can tell this is a much more robust machine they're using custom extrusions for their rails everything is powder coated and just overall the fit and the finish of the machine feels really Nice. Also, everything feels pretty tight, so there's no wobble whatsoever when you're moving this machine around, which is good because with their stepper motors and drivers, the max speed on this machine is 20,000 millimeters per minute, and currently that's the highest speed I've seen for diode lasers. It can run at that speed, and the big reason for that is because they've upgraded their laser module. Before, the max power they had was 5.5 watts. Now they have upgraded to 8. 10 watt. Now, there are 20 watt modules that are out there, like the ones from Xtool and Atom Stack. I'm guessing they are gonna have one of those in the future. They're actually one of the last companies to come out with a 10 watt module. But you can tell they've actually put a good bit of development time into it. And the main reason for that is just how small this module is. And they're marketing, they're claiming they're able to reduce down the size of it, even though it does have internal fans as well as internal air assist. That is what this tube is right here. And to give you some comparison, this is the 10 watt unit from Xtool. So this is a good bit bigger as well as a good bit heavier. Now the cooling on this one is probably going to be better, but having a smaller laser module means that you can run this at those high speeds and you're going to get a lot less vibrations and a lot less shaking as a result. And for the most part, it's about the same size as their 5.5 watt modules. And like with most things with Otour, these things are interchangeable. So you can just do a screw here on the side you can pull the thing out and then it just slides on this rail on the back. Another nice upgrade to this module, and you just saw it, is the air assist. So this is actually integrated into the module itself. There's a port on the top that you can hook up a compressor to. In the past, you'd have to get an accessory that was kind of jerry-rigged to work with air assist, but this is nice to see this one is built directly in. Now, it might just be the tube that I'm using, or maybe I'm not setting it up right, but it doesn't really stay in there super well. You can definitely push it down, but it doesn't really lock in as well. But with all the testing I've done, I haven't run into an issue using this guy as a of yeah. Now you will have to purchase a compressor and those have gotten pretty cheap on Amazon and then you're good to go. Some other quick features for you. The overall work area of this machine is 400 by 400 millimeters, which is pretty much standard across the board. There are accessories you can get that is going to extend the machine for the rails as well as a cover for the machine and even a Z axis that is a lot easier to move up and down, even though this one's actually pretty easy. Another nice feature on the laser module is they have this little guy right here and this is how you focus. So you just drop this over your material, drop this down, get it where it needs to go, lock it in, and then that just flips right back up. An X tool also has a feature like that. It just comes from the side and it flips down. And that's always been one of my favorite things about the X tool unit is just how easy they are to focus. You don't have to worry about little focus blocks that you put underneath that you have to keep track of. Everything's built in. And it's great that Otour is using that as well. On the safety side of things, it's got pretty much any of the standard features you've seen. They have the normal gyroscope. So if this tilts or if this moves, then it's going to cut the laser beam. If you're running the machine through USB and it gets disconnected, it also is going to shut out. It's got something called long exposure duration. So maybe something happens with the motors and this laser is just firing in one spot and not moving. That's very bad because it's going to start a fire eventually. It also will shut it off as well. Now, a couple things that are really nice to see. One is this emergency stop button right here. So you just hit it. I just did that. And you twist it, pops back up. That kills the connection real fast. So if something's happening really crazy, you can stop the machine quick. And another nice feature, especially if you're in a setting where you have other people that you don't want turning on this machine without supervision, maybe you have kids and you're in your garage like me, is they have this key lock. So you actually have to turn this to the left and then it's ready to go. So you can actually turn it back, lock it, take the key out. And then even if you hit the start button, which is 
this guy right there, it's just gonna turn red and it's not gonna turn on until you have the key turned. And then it turns on and in a second it's going to home itself. And the homing process is the next thing I wanted to talk about because this is not using limit switches. So those are usually the switches at the very ends or the limits of both the X and the Y axis. Once it hits those switches, then it stops. This one's not using that, all it actually has are little screws that physically cause it to stop. So there is no way for this laser module to actually ram into the edge of your machine, which I definitely have had happen a ton of times. And it has those screws set up on all four corners. Now, when I was first looking at it, I was trying to figure out what they were using. So sometimes you'll see people using like a laser or an infrared sensor, but Otour is actually using a closed loop system between their stepper motors and their motherboard, which is telling it where to go. So normally that communication is just one way. So the motherboard tells the stepper motors how to move and they move good to go. The closed loop system, the stepper motors, I guess really more the drivers are sending a signal back saying where their position actually is. So like how far did they actually move? So because of that, when this hits the edge, the motherboard's still sending the signal to move, but the drivers and the motors are saying, hey, we can't go anymore, so we must be at the end. What's nice about that is it's pretty much foolproof. Even with limit switches, you can crush them. I've done that a ton, especially on bigger CNC's. But with this, since it's a physical mechanical stop, there's no way you're going to crush this into an edge. And because it's that closed loop system, even if you do wind up hitting an edge, the motherboard's going to know it's going to register an alarm and the machine's going to cut off. And as of right now, Otour is the first company I have seen do that. On the connection side of things, we pretty much have the standard setup. You can connect by USB, which is what I mostly do with my computer. So you can load your file and then run it directly from the machine. And one thing I actually skipped in the setup is that is where your firmware lives. So when you get that card, make sure and put it in your machine because if you don't, it's not going to work. It also has a Wi-Fi antenna so it can connect to your network and then you can control the machine with your phone. So they've got their own custom software software, which most of these companies are starting to do, so you can just run it pretty easy. Now, I really don't dig super deep into the apps. It definitely has your basic controls, and you can run pretty much anything from there. I always like to connect mine by computer so I can run it through Lightburn, and that is so I can do my test files. So let's actually jump into that right now. Again, as we're going through these, if you guys want to download these files for yourself so you can test out your machine and figure out the best settings, there is a link down in the description. So I'm pretty much always using three millimeter birch plywood so I can compare this between machines. And you can see just with the overall test file, you're getting a good bit of power. And you're actually getting marking at 10% power all the way up to 9,000 millimeters per minute. Now again, the max speed is 20,000 millimeters per minute, but a lot of times I don't run it that fast because I also don't want to run the laser at full power, which causes the life of it to go down a lot faster than when you're running it at lower settings. Now for comparison, here is the Laser Master 2 Pro. Again, this is a 5.5 watt laser module versus the 10 watt, and obviously it's a lot stronger, so it is doing a good job. But the more interesting thing is when you compare it to other 10 watt machines, specifically this 10 watt module from Xtool. If we flip over to the cutting test, I'm actually getting these little squares cut out both at higher speeds and lower power, even compared to that 10 watt module from Xtool. Now at the end of the day, those differences might not be as big of a deal for you, but if you are batching out a ton of parts, increasing the speed is going to save you time. And since you can run it at lower power, you're also going to get a longer life for the overall machine. They do have a rotary as an accessory, and they do a really nice job of making it pretty much plug and play. I don't have the rotary here, but there is a switch on the back that changes the Y motor from just like your standard gantry setup, which is what we have right here, to a rotary. So then it's going to spin the rotary versus moving this in the Y direction. And that switch in the back is super easy, plus the plug to connect it. On the assembly side of things, really easy to put together. This is a great quality of life improvement over their previous machines. You're really only talking about eight screws to get this thing put together. And I was pretty much up and running in less than 30 minutes. Now, in addition to those test files, I did just run a couple pictures so you can see it. So to continue along with the Star Wars theme, this is for the upcoming Andor show. And the resolution is pretty much on par with any of the other machines that are out there. Again, if you wanted to get a full list of all the things this can engrave and cut, you can definitely check them out 
out on their website. And one really nice thing that they have provided is actual recommended settings for all of their major machines for a bunch of different materials, whether you want to engrave or cut it. Now I will say I used their setting for my birch plywood and I did find that running it as fast as they recommended didn't really give me the dark result that I was looking for for my photo engrave. So I had to drop that speed down. And again, that's why I definitely recommend using these cutting tests because especially when you're doing this grid, you're really gonna be able to see the best setting to where you're getting the dark color, but it's not really engraving into the material so you can still run it at higher speeds. And for this one, you can definitely run it at 10,000 or even a little bit higher, which I don't even show on this because I'm getting a good, nice dark mark all the way through. And the last feature, which is probably the most important to you, is the price. Currently in the US, this is priced right at 700 bucks. And that's compared to the Xtool D1, the 10 watt version, also 700 bucks. So when you're looking at these machines, you're pretty much comparing them exactly to each other. Now, if you're gonna ask me my recommendation between the two, it's complicated. I probably would lean a little bit towards Tour just because I was finding the laser module would have better performance in terms of cutting power. The x -Tool machine, I still feel like has a little bit nicer build quality, but this one is definitely no slouch. I really do like the additional safety features, especially this key that this one provides. But the problem comes if you want to upgrade this to a 20 watt, laser module, which is currently the most powerful configuration for a diode laser that I've seen. Or tour again does not provide that, but with Xtool, you could actually upgrade your module in the future. I have no doubt that Otour will eventually come out with one, but in terms of the upgrade cycles these companies seem to be on, Otour is usually on the later side of things versus Xtool, Atomstack, and even Niji. But if 10 watts is all you need, this is definitely a great machine to pick up. Now, if you wanna learn about the other companies that are out there and the machines that could be a potential for you, I actually broke down a ton of them in this video and we're going to jump into that right now. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.